Hey everybody, it's Sterling Valentine. Welcome to your list building masterclass. List building, to me, is the heart and soul of internet marketing. And I want to caution you right up front, if you're not familiar with list building, this can totally change the way that you approach internet marketing. Because list building is, the, to me, the secret key. It's, it's the turbocharger that really gets your business to the next level. And I'm going to show you some of the ways that you can mess up and then how some of the ways that list building can fix those mess ups because in internet marketing it all comes down to signups and sales and if you are not getting signups and sales then you may benefit from considering that you're not doing enough list building so we'll talk about that more in a little bit but right now I want to let you know that our master class objective for our list building class is for you to learn advanced strategies to build massive subscriber lists and keep them opening your emails see this little typo in here I put get build so we got to get the right things right, and the right things right are not to worry about that. We have to just move on to our to our uh, list of things we're going to cover for today. So tonight we're going to cover how to quickly set up squeeze pages and capture systems, how to use autoresponders effectively, how to create quick giveaway freebies to build your list, how to find free pre-written emails, how to increase open rates and click-through rates, and I'm going to cover some other stuff too. But we're really going to start off with just a, a really good list building basics, uh, you know intro so let's get that started right away so for those of you who haven't seen this before this is my super duper stupid simple model of how to make money online we get a buyer and we get an offer and hopefully we you know make some money so I'm gonna bring up my little ink uh, thing here and see if I can make you some nice little graphics as well so nothing happens until there's a buyer nothing happens until somebody actually takes a dollar out and is ready to actually make a purchase so you have to have a buyer that's a dollar and then the offer depends on whatever it is that they're buying but usually what most marketers do online is send their buyers directly to the offer right so that's challenging for several reasons to make a living doing that and I'll, I'll tell you why let me first pull up uh, actually this is from yesterday's intensive overtime webinar we did on affiliate marketing, which was amazing. So I want to show you this right now because this, I think, will be equally amazing for you. So take a look. To send traffic directly to a seller's page is like you and I standing on either side of a house, each holding a tennis ball, right? and trying to throw our tennis balls to the top of the house so that they bang into each other at the exact same moment right here. Now imagine the odds and the timing of being able to throw your tennis ball and me throw my tennis ball and hit them together. It can be done, but just about impossible, right? Very, very difficult. Well, that's what it's like when you send your traffic directly to the affiliate offer or whatever it is that you're trying to sell online. It's very, very challenging to hit that right buyer with the right offer at the right time and put these two things together and actually end up making some money. So anybody who teaches you to grab an affiliate link or take your own product and just drive traffic to it is really giving you, is shortchanging you on what you could be having happen for you. So let's take a look, because that, that's really one step, you see? Just one step. Buyer, here's an offer. Just like if you were walking down the street and somebody walked up to you, opened up their coat and said, here, do you want to buy a watch? I mean, that's just straight up one step. It doesn't give you an opportunity to close more sales like list building does because it's two steps. So let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Do you see here how we have three steps, attraction, capture, monetization? This is really the key. By driving traffic to a squeeze page first, you have the opportunity to get an easy yes from somebody. The first sale is not even a sale. The first sale is just, hi, can I send you some free stuff? Can I add value to your life? Can I give you something with no strings attached? It's so much easier to get a yes and to get a person in a good mood when you're giving them something instead of when you're trying to sell them something. Because believe me, you know, as well as I do, we do not like to be sold to, but we love to buy, right? So once you get somebody on your list, you can then send them relevant product offers on the back end via email 
as we say in the business, until they buy or until they die. Now, I don't mean physically die, of course, we don't want that. I just mean until they buy something or until they unsubscribe. And because this is scalable and friction-free, that means it doesn't cost you anything extra to build a 100,000 name list instead of a one name list, you know. I mean, you might pay a little more in autoresponder services or bandwidth, but really, it scales up so easily and so inexpensively. You can just build as large a list as you want, and for the same amount of work, of driving traffic directly to the offer like you used to do, you could just drive them to the squeeze page instead and then drive them to the product offers later. Now you get two really big benefits besides the fact that it's easier to get a yes. The first benefit is that you have multiple products that you can offer. So remember we talked about the uh, throwing the tennis ball over the you know roof? The problem with that is that you've picked the one product. That's it. You've just decided that I'm going to send traffic to this one product. That's all. Nothing else. You've pre-decided for the prospect. Maybe they don't want that product. Maybe they already have that product, right? Maybe they want it, but they're not ready to buy it yet. They need something at a lower price point, but three months from now, they'd be ready to buy it. You don't know. So instead of being a mind reader and sending them just one product and crossing your fingers and hoping it works, send them to a list, a squeeze page, because now you have the opportunity to have multiple products over time. So multiple products is the first benefit, but over time is the next benefit. And that means that maybe right now they're not ready, but they'll be ready later. And therefore, both horizontally and vertically, you've expanded. You've expanded your, expanded your product line across, you know, from left to right, multiple columns of products. And then you have multiple opportunities for those products. So you might have product A, Email goes out one week, maybe they buy it, maybe they don't. Product A gets another email in a week or two. Meanwhile, product B, C, and D have been introduced, and you can rotate them around and around. So now you really maximize your potential to get a sale, even multiple sales, because you've built yourself a list. And your list is an asset unlike anything else. Your list is really, you know, they say the money's in the list. If, if there was a burning building and you could only grab one thing when you were leaving, it wouldn't be the products you've created or your, your, you know, your education or whatever. It would be your list because with your list, it's almost instantly monetizable if it's a quality list that you've built a good relationship with. So these are really the basics, and I want to make sure that everybody understands how critical and crucial list building is to everything that you do. You even get the benefit, the added benefit, of being able, because these are disconnected, you can then change your squeeze page over here. Or you can change your product offers on the back, and they're totally unrelated to each other. That means that you could build a list with a squeeze page that has certain autoresponder messages, let's say in January, but then at the end of January, change around all these product offers and put a whole bunch of different product offers in there and still use the same squeeze page. So had you been driving traffic just to those offers, remember, like we were talking about before, sending it to one offer, that's it. If you have an article out there, for example, and you've hard-coded that link into the bottom of the article, that's it. You're promoting XYZ super duper mega program .com. And that's it. So what happens if the product goes out of business? What happens if you find a better product to suit your customers' needs? Um, you know, what if the uh, they're not taking good care of, of your customers and you want to switch to a better product? You're stuck because you're promoting directly to that. But being by being able to build this two-step process, now the back end is totally disconnected from the front end so you can change out your messages at will without messing up the squeeze page you know they're they're completely different so i really really like that part of list building it puts you in control it reminds me of when people get an 800 number right and then they have that 800 number forward to some other number right and it's kind of like when they have those vanity numbers 1-800 uh, you know we do tile or we do carpeting or whatever if you own that number then you can forward that number to different places as you see fit. And this is the front end. This is the touch point, as I like to call it, here. So as long as you're sending people to your squeeze page, this stuff can change out later. Very, very powerful. And people don't realize that, I think. They think they just want to get that quick buck so they go to try to send traffic to their affiliate link. But that is just counter to everything I believe in. So let's take a look at some of these basics. How to quickly set up squeeze pages and capture systems. Well, in a nutshell, we talked about attraction capture monetization. Uh, attraction is something you do, but the capture and monetization systems are really sort of one and done skills. So I want to show you this separation here. I would separate these two things 
step two and step three capture and monetization into sort of a one time one and done setup you have to set these up you can set them up and then forget them you do want to eventually split test your squeeze page of course make sure it's converting well maybe do a better squeeze page change out your product offers in the back end if they're not working as well as you want or if some hot new product comes out sure stick it in there but it's really basically done when you do it but traffic generation which we'll talk about in another masterclass this is kind of circular circular or whatever it goes over and over and over again cyclical I should have said you continue every day to go out there and generate traffic so this is really for the most part a have situation right and this is a do situation and how is that relevant to the slide we made just a second ago where I showed you how to set up squeeze pages and capture systems because I want you to understand that your squeeze page and your capture system once set up can continue to work for you once you have them and then you just go out and beat the bushes every day and send qualified traffic so I don't want you to feel like this is a lot of work or this is something that you're constantly having to do I don't want to hear that you have to go learn HTML and FTP and PHP and all this stuff to set these up because this is something that we get wrong a lot we try to invest ourselves into learning skills that are required just one time and I want to show you how silly this is maybe you've done this yourself because I've certainly done it imagine a, a doctor who wants to open up a, a doctor's office and he's gone to medical training for 10 years but right before he opens up his offices and now that he's got his license he decides to take two years of masonry training so that he can learn how to do the bricklaying required to build his office now how silly is that it's pretty ridiculous right all you would say to him is, well, just, dude, go get an office. Go get somebody to build you an office or use one that's already there. It's so simple. You could move in, you know, move in condition. They have them already furnished. You could be open by tonight. What are you doing trying to learn how to lay the bricks yourself? That's foolish. It's not a good investment of your time. Well, we laugh at that scenario. But the sad truth is this is the exact scenario that we do all the time in Internet marketing. We try to learn all of the necessary tech work to do these things that are really one and done, right? this whole section one and done and I draw a little red flag here because I want you to see if you see yourself doing a lot of tech work that's to be a red flag to you because you only have to do these things one time so why would you invest all the time necessary when you can just outsource this or leverage somebody else doing it this is the stuff traffic generation that requires your constant attention this is what the doctor will be doing every day the actual doctoring stuff right this is the bricklaying this is the doctoring so this is where he needs to spend his time and be good at you know that stuff that's where you you uh, you know get the return on your investment same with the race car metaphor you don't the guys who make the money aren't the guys who build the race car they're the guys who drive the race car right they get the big winner circle you know um, trophy at the end so make sure you spend your time focusing on getting these one and done skills done as quickly and easily as possible quickly set up your squeeze pages and capture systems so let's talk about that let me show you an example of a squeeze page. This is an example of a squeeze page from List Laser, which is one of my sites that we provide you guys with so that you can build squeeze pages quickly and easily. It's got about 40 different, uh, currently 40 different free reports. And as you recall from our diagram here, you want to give a free gift. You see this prospect requests free gift by joining your list through squeeze page and becomes a subscriber. So that's really the key here. You get somebody on your list by offering them a free goodie. So in this particular squeeze page, we are offering them a freebie and so let me give you a breakdown some of the pieces of a squeeze page just so you can see them we've got the headline we've got the bullet fits uh, bullet fits their benefit bullets I call them bullet fits but if I don't explain that to you it's gonna sound weird so your benefit bullets like this is what you will get out of it plus I always like to include a picture of my freebie here's the opt-in form itself for them to put their information and here's my personal branding Now that's not me but I'm just showing you this is one of somebody else's squeeze pages that's one of the members of List Laser. It would be obviously your own face here and your own name. You just fill it into your profile one time and then all the List Laser squeeze pages do that. So this isn't a promotion for List Laser. You can do any any kind of squeeze page you want. You can certainly follow this example. Don't steal the text, but you know you can build it like this yourself as long as it has these particular pieces. So let's take a look at them in you know a little more detail. The headline here you just have to give me some kind of benefit you know the headline is actually the ad for the ad just like you know you see in the newspaper and a full page ad for something that ad is for something whatever a sale at Macy's 
but the headline part is the ad for the rest of that ad. You read the headline and decide whether or not you want to read the rest of the ad. So even the ad has an ad, right? So you would want to make sure that your headline is benefit rich and you focused. That means you will gain instant access to these exclusive marketing ideas, start making more money from your campaign. See, it's you focused. It's not, I'm a really cool guy and I wrote this report. Now, you do see those in the case and they've worked, but I love sticking with you and sticking benefit focused. Start making more money from your campaigns, you know, get instant access. These are benefits. If you do this transaction, namely exchange your name and email address here for this book, you know, that's a quid pro quo. I give you this, you give me that. Uh, if you do that, then you'll gain these benefits. Instant access, make more money, right? So don't make the mistake of talking about yourself. There are actually four different, uh, they, I call them the four P's of marketing. Three are the ones you don't want to use, and one is the one you do. There's product, provider, and process. Product means you talk about the product. How many times have you seen this? Our product is great. I call it pizza box marketing. You've tried the rest, now try the best. Our product is the best. You know, uh, That's about the product. That's a feature. That's not a benefit. That doesn't do me any good. You know, uh, Our microwave ovens come with so-and-so technology. Well, that's a feature of it that the other one doesn't have, but what do, I, what do I care? What's in it for me? What good does that do me? What is the benefit for me, right? So try not to talk about product too much, uh, as opposed to the final one I'll give you. Provider, how many times have you heard this one? We've been in business since 1929, and our forefathers, well, that's about you guys, you know, where John Smith is a financial advisor who's really committed to his clients, blah, blah, blah. That's talking about the provider. And I know sometimes talking about product or provider is important, but I want you to try to stay away from it whenever you can, and I'll give you the fourth one in a second. The third mistake people make is they talk about process. We use the so-and-so technology to make uh, our, you know, whatever's really, really great. And they go into how they do what they do. It's like a mechanic trying to advertise his services by telling you how good he turns his wrenches you know, and the screwdrivers. I, I don't care about the process. I just want my car fixed, right? The benefit. So if you're not going to talk about product, provider, or process, then the thing you should talk about, the P that matters, is prospect. That means talk about me. Or in this case, you would use the word you, right? So you are about to experience uh, a radical shift in your traffic. You are about to learn the list building secrets that can let you build a big list. You see how prospect focused marketing is so much better? Now yeah, we have to talk about how. You are going to learn how to do list building by coming to the list building masterclass. So yeah, I have to mention it, right? The masterclass is held by Sterling Valentine. He's been doing internet marketing for seven years. So yeah, I have to talk about the provider a little bit and the process of how you do it. You come and attend the class. You ask questions before. You ask questions after. I draw. I show you text. I show you images. So, of course, this stuff is relevant, right? And it's probably, at some point, necessary. But it's not sufficient, and it's not primary. What's primary is prospect focus. So now when we go back to this uh, squeeze page that I showed you a minute ago, you can see how this headline is you-focused, right? It talks about me. So I'm reading it. I'm going to get these ac access to these ideas, and I'm going to hopefully start making some more money. That's great. Good. I'm interested in that. Thank you for showing me something about me. Talk about me, because that's what I care about when I'm reading something. And you're the same way as I am. We all are, right? Now, we'll go to the bullet fits, the benefit bullets. These are the things that I will learn. These are my benefits. How to quickly evaluate the viability of various in this markets. Here's a free resource I'll give you that you get this, blah, blah, blah. So these are all benefits to me. These are things that I will benefit from. Uh, let's switch over now to the picture. I think the picture is important. Uh, you may or may not agree, but I really like seeing what I'm going to get. And free reports are a great giveaway, and they're very easy to make uh, images for. You can have somebody do it on you know, Fiverr or something, or if you're a member of MarketerLink.com, I provide uh, a free e-cover generator for you there for members of MarketerLink. Uh, you can email me, startingvalentine.com, if you want more information about that if you're not a member. Uh, the branding is, to me, very important to be a branded affiliate marketer. Now, I do provide my VIPs with a non-branded squeeze page because it works very well. So you can get conversions from a non-branded squeeze page, of course. But I think you should be a branded affiliate marketer. Branded means you build a long-term relationship. You are the value-added person. 
I'm going to tell you my secrets. I'm going to give you my review of this software because now people have a guide. You know, they have somebody that they can, a consultant that who's going to work with them and say, this is why I think you should have this piece of software or whatever. You know, that's the person who's stepping in the middle and providing the value add. And if you were with us on our affiliate marketing uh, in our masterclass yesterday, we talked so much about the value of the pre-sell and how an affiliate is a pre-seller. They are the person who opens you up to the idea so that the actual product provider can close the deal, right? So vitally important to brand yourself sooner or later. I prefer if you're going to use List Laser, it's an option. Definitely use that option and you know brand yourself. Why not? So finally, you want to get to name and email address. Now you can mess with this a little bit if you're making your own squeeze page. Sometimes people leave out name and sometimes people change the submit button to yes, give me my free stuff or something like that, you know. So there's just various ways to do it. But that's a little quick mini master class on squeeze pages. And really, squeeze pages are the heart of list building, in my opinion. So we're talking about the heart of the heart of it, right? List building is the heart of internet marketing. Squeeze pages are the heart of list building. So it doesn't mean that you can't build your list other ways. But sooner or later, you're going to have to have that middle column here. Remember, we looked at this diagram before. The traffic triggers here, this means that they're on the outside of your business, right? Over here on the inside, when they're in their autoresponder series, on your you know in your list database, they're on the inside. So this right here is like the uh, seesaw, you know, the teeter totter from when you were a kid, where two kids sat one on each side, right here, right here. You know, it it pivots. This is where they go from outsiders to insiders. This is the the hinge right here where the whole thing turns on. So that's why squeeze pages are so vitally important. Yes, you can have a squeeze page on the side of your blog, a little sidebar opt-in. Um, you can do them all kinds of ways, but sooner or later, you're going to have to ask for the opt-in, right? Unless you want to just drive traffic to a product offering. We already talked about that. So let's get back to our uh, class description here for a second. <coughs> Excuse me. So how do we build these quickly and easily? Well, I would suggest either using listlaser.com or getting your VIP set up from our service or getting some PLR, which stands for private label rights. Uh, you know, I, I'm never going to be a, a hard seller just because we have a free service that gives squeeze pages and a, a more higher end, completely done for you service. Uh, you know, I'm not going to sit here and tell you those are the only things you can use. You can do this yourself. You don't need me or my staff to help you do this. You don't need anybody's service. You can do it on your own. And if you're just flat dead broke, then you don't have any options. You have to do it yourself. So what I would do is Google free PLR. And I would look for free PLR squeeze page, free PLR report. And you're going to have to build it by hand. It's, it's not easy and it's time consuming, but it's possible, right? So either way, make sure that you don't sit there and try to recreate the wheel whenever possible. So for example, use List Laser or VIP Setup Service if you can. And if you can't, don't start from scratch. Try to leverage as much free PLR as possible. So for example, maybe you can find in your niche a completely already done for you squeeze page. Well, I would use that over you know, opening up your Dreamweaver or some kind of code editing program and just starting from a blank white canvas, you know, and let me think of what headline I can write. You know, see if you can leverage already done stuff for you. I love done for you. Maybe instead you can just find a free report to give away and then go to Fiverr.com or something and ask a guy or, you know, any outsourcing site that you can find online, <coughs> excuse me, and ask somebody, hey, can you whip me up a squeeze page that fits this free report, right? Can you maybe whip me up a, uh, you know, a graphic for it? So whenever possible, try to leverage somebody else's work quickly and easily beats difficult and slowly every time. And remember, the skills that it requires to do this may take a lot longer to learn than they actually take to implement. So you might have to spend months to learn how to do something that really only takes 10 minutes altogether to put together. So is that a good return on your investment? You know, I, I feel you should spend your time and energy learning and focusing on traffic generation because that's really the key. That's where your revenue comes from. If you quadruple your traffic generation skills, you can quadruple your product sales on the back end, you know? So that's where the real money, uh, you know, is that that's where the rubber meets the road. Uh, so that's why I say use whatever you can that's leveraged already, whether it's pre-built for you or as many pre-built pieces as you can. Go to an outsourcer either way 
get that done fast. So how do we use autoresponders effectively? That's a question I get often. So let's go back to our diagram here. The autoresponder is, is a funny thing because it's, it's a word for both the system and the thing that the system sends out. So people sometimes get confused. When we have a squeeze page, the name that is entered goes into a database, a DB. It's just like a big spreadsheet of names, right? And then that software program, the autoresponder program that holds these names, automatically kicks out on whatever scheduled basis you tell it to, <coughs> excuse me, the emails in sequence, email number one, email number two, email number three, et cetera, four. And these can go out every day, every other day, once a month, I wouldn't suggest, but you know, whenever you want to, you decide the interval in between each one of these things, right? So the autoresponder is the service that you sign up to that provides you with the ability to manage these names. And it's also the name of the auto response emails that go out, your autoresponder emails. So could you build a list without an autoresponder service? I guess you could, but you'd have to hook this into, I don't know, some kind of form that would go to your, your Gmail or your Outlook inbox. And then what happens when somebody wants to unsubscribe? You know, how do you manage all the names? What happens when you get to a thousand names? You're going to copy and paste a thousand names every time you send an email. So it just doesn't make any sense. It's almost impossible to build a, 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 any kind of decent sized list without an autoresponder service. So you can use the autoresponder services that are uh, professional, or you could even, if you wanted to, if you were very technically in inclined to install your own on your server, but one out of a hundred people maybe would be a good fit for that. The rest of you guys should definitely just use an autoresponder service. So how do you use them effectively? Well, you definitely want to sign up <coughs> people and then send them a message right away. Excuse me one second, I just need to take a little bit of a drink. I've been training all day. Sorry about that, folks. It's not pretty. It's real time. This is the way we do it around here because we want to get the right things right and give you the meat of it without worrying about stopping and editing and everything. <coughs> so you definitely want to respond to somebody right away with a message that's some kind of welcome message that says, you know, hi, I'm a real person. Thanks for downloading my free giveaway, goodie, whatever it is. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you keep your eye out for my emails. Maybe you want to tell them a little bit about yourself. Maybe you want to invite them to get a further free goodie or introduce them to where your help desk is so that they can send you a message or tell them to follow you on Twitter or Facebook or whatever. So intro introduce yourself and introduce the relationship right away. It's very important to build a relationship with you know, the people on your list. And then also, I want you to start thinking about monetization long term. So you should have several good products that you like, three, four, five, uh, more if you can, but definitely at least three, four or five. And then start to put some messages into your follow-up sequence. Now, let's take a pause here and distinguish between follow-up sequence and actual broadcast emails. So, follow-up emails are emails that go out when I opt in and they're automatically sent out, right? This email is locked and loaded and ready to go like a bullet in a gun and it's just sitting there. So if I opt in, on January 1st, I get email number one. Then on January 2nd, if you have it set this way, I get email number two. That's what follow-up emails are, and they just go out in that order. If I sign up on January 15th instead of January 1st, then I'll get the first email on January 15th, the next email on January 16th, etc. So no matter where somebody is on your sequence, whether they sign up on January 1st or December 1st, they get the follow-up sequence, and that sequence of auto-response messages follows up with them. That's why we call it follow up. Broadcast is different. That means that you're sending an email at a given time, like usually right now or later tonight or tomorrow. And that email goes out to everybody, regardless of where they are in the sequence. So it will go out to the person who just got message number one. It will also go out the same time to the person who just got message number two. It will go out to the person who got message 100 from you. It doesn't matter. It goes out in real time right now because you have broadcasted it. So you have the option to use follow-up or broadcast or both, and I recommend you use both. Uh, I'm more of a broadcaster than a follow-upper myself, uh, just because I like to keep it sort of live and current, um, but I think the money is really in more often doing follow-ups. You know, That's one of the places I have to increase my game a little bit and, and do a little more work on that end. 
but at least have one or two follow-up messages. Sometimes people don't have any and they just do all broadcasts. Sometimes people have all follow-ups and they don't do any broadcasts ever. They test and tweak and they have a whole hundred autoresponder message series and they never mess with it. So uh, your mileage may vary, but I would recommend understanding the difference and at least having a couple auto-response messages as soon as possible. And one more tip about using them effectively. This actually goes uh, in with another point here about how to find free pre-written emails. So I want to combine these two before we move into quick giveaways. How to use them effectively is to use ones that work and whenever you can leverage, leverage the emails that other people have already written that are already proven to convert. And usually this is in an affiliate marketing conversation. So if you're an affiliate, you want to go to the affiliate tools section and find the swipe copy. Now swipe means that you're allowed to take it, swipe it if you will, and use it for yourself. So these emails have been split tested. They try one, they try the other one, they see which one works better, and then whatever one is the champ, they use that one. And then they test a new one against it, and if the new one beats it, then that's the new winner. It's kind of like, you know, a sport split testing. So you finally always have the strongest competitor, right? Those are the ones they provide you because they want to put their best foot forward and give you the best that they've got. So they give you the best ones because they want you to make sales for them. So use your swipe copy, use the subject lines that they provide you, use the body copy, and make sure that you don't reinvent the wheel, as I said earlier, by writing your own when they're already there to be used for you. You see, if they're already there, why would you just sit there and try to write, especially if you're not a great copywriter? You need to leverage what somebody's already done. So effectively means that they get opened and they get clicked. And we'll talk about that a little more in a few minutes. So these are some of the tips I give you for using them effectively. And of course, where to find pre-written emails, there's two places. One is going to be, as I said, the affiliate tools. Another is going to be PLR again. So you can type in PLR email or PLR uh, newsletter, right? PLR email or newsletter. These are two great ways uh, to find copy that you can use to promote stuff, right? I like affiliate stuff because it's uh, even easier than PLR, so whenever possible, I try to find the affiliate swipe and use it. I recommend you do the same thing. So how to create quick freebie giveaways to build your list. How do we do that? Well, as I told you before, the best way I can tell you to do it is use a done for you already set up thing for you. So <clears throat> again, List Laser is a great place to do that. And it's got 40 of them, but you can certainly also find PLR reports. So type look for PLR reports in your search engine. Or you want to find PLR articles. But I'll give you a couple more tips. Uh, I happen to use something called Dragon Dictate. It's actually called Mac Speech on the map, on the map, on the Mac, uh, Mac Speech. And a great thing that I like to do is talk out stuff that gets transcripted instantly. So you can either do that or find a transcriptionist online. But if you are a person who has a business, let's say you're a dentist and you want to build a list of people who might be interested in coming get their teeth cleaned, but you know a lot about dental stuff, so maybe you can dictate a free report about seven ways to keep your teeth clean. Or maybe you can get interviewed by somebody you know, maybe even one of your customers, and then send that out to be transcribed. These are great, easy, quick ways to make a free, customized giveaway that has a high value for somebody else, as long as you remember to keep it you-focused, benefits-focused, and don't spend uh, seven pages talking about what a great dentist you are, because that's the wrong you, right? We want to make it focused on the prospect. So uh, another way to, to maybe create some free, quick giveaway freebies is to do... Uh, teleseminar or webinar, record it like this one's being recorded, and then give that away. Uh, it's very easy to make them on the fly, and it kind of ties in the same way as we're going to talk about in our product creation uh, masterclass, how to create products, because really quick giveaway freebies and quick products to sell, very, very similar skill sets, you know? So whether you use your own creations or PLR, or you actually use a done-for-you system, you know, something that's easily uh, just plug-and-play stuff like the list laser. Either way, definitely, I, I keep drilling it into your head, and I want to keep drilling it to you. Done-for-you, already done, as set up as possible, 
leverageable, pre-made, pre-written. You see where I'm going with this? Because it saves you time, and time is the most valuable commodity. It's not money. It's time. Money can be spent and earned back. Once time is spent, it's gone. So you definitely want to leverage your time whenever possible. So these are some great, <coughs> quick ways to create some freebies. And we talked about how to find some pre-written emails. So let's move on to increasing open rates and click-through rates. So let's say you do have to actually you know, write your own emails. Uh, maybe you've got your own business and you can't find any PLR. It's not an affiliate program. You're making your own product or something. So I want to show you that there are tiers, T-I-E-R-S, tiers of uh, sort of choke points that happen. So first of all, we're going to look at traffic triggers. Traffic triggers, right? T-T. And then they go to whatever your uh, opt-in is here, let's say your squeeze page. Then they get a subject line, sub, and then they get body copy. And then they get whatever the actual thing is that you're trying to sell. So that may look crazy to you, but I promise you in a few minutes you'll understand. So number one, the traffic trigger. What is the traffic trigger? Maybe it's an article or a video or a blog post or a forum comment or whatever is the thing that you've put out there. A traffic trigger, as we talked about in our three column diagram, attraction, capture, and monetization, is whatever they trip over that says, hey, buddy, you just tripped over me, this video or this article, but come over here to my place and get your free goodie, right? So the traffic trigger is the uh, trigger that notifies them. There's something over there for you. Go there, right? So over here on the traffic trigger side, they are away. They are somewhere else. We want to bring them home. You know how football teams have home games and away games, right? We want to get them out of the away arena, bring them to the home arena, get them on our home turf, to our squeeze page, right? So here on the squeeze page, whatever it is, the free offer that you've got, we put SP here. That's phase number two. So you'll see already, you're going to lose some people. Not everybody who sees your traffic trigger, let's say it's an article, they read your article online. At the bottom of your article, it says, Hey, for more information, get your free report here at stevesgreatsite.com. Not everybody who reads that article will click through. So from stage one to stage two, from traffic trigger to squeeze page, you're going to lose some people. It's just natural, and it's okay. That's the way it goes. You can't expect every, every you know, level here, every tier of getting 100% conversion. It's crazy. I don't think that's ever happened to anybody ever. There's just naturally going to be some people that come and some people that don't. So... Once they're on your squeeze page, they've clicked through the traffic trigger. They're on your squeeze page, but then they may not, you know, stay. So some of them are going to leave at the traffic triggers page and say, I'm not even going to bother with that squeeze page. I'm not even going to click through the link to go see it. Some will. And when they hit the squeeze page, of course, some will say, yeah, I'm not interested in that free offer. I'm out of here. But some, a percentage of them, will. So they will opt into your squeeze page and then join your list. And when they join your list course they're going to get emails that's what an email list is and you'll see this says sub I'll add the word line down here sub line means that the very next thing they see when they're on your list is in their inbox they see a subject line you know from you from your name and the subject line hey open me up or here's a free goodie whatever your subject line is that's the very next thing that's number three the thing that they see so maybe they do say yes to the traffic trigger click through. They click through and hit your squeeze page. That's one. The jump from one to two, that's one jump. Then they go through the squeeze page, great, and they get to your subject line. Okay, great. So that's the second jump. <coughs> They're still with us. They're looking at our subject line. Does the subject line make them want to open the email? If not, they never open it. So that's another loss there. It just stays unopened in their inbox. So yes, they went through the traffic trigger okay. Yes, they went through the squeeze page okay. But when it got to stage three, the subject line, we lost them. And yes, you're going to lose a certain number of these as well. But for those who do click through, the click through here from stage three to stage four is that now they get to read the email. Copy, that word there is copy. This pen is hard to write with on these uh, writing pads, so forgive my <clears throat> bad writing. But it says copy. 
that means that's the text, the body of the message itself. La la la, do do do, and then a link, right? So once they read the body copy, does the body copy persuade them to click that link? If not, what happens? They go back to their inbox and we lose them, at least for now. Now, it doesn't mean we lose them off of our list. The only way we lose them off of our list is if they never join the list over here, you know. But once they do opt in, or I guess if they never join here, that's what I should say. But once they opt in and they're across this line here, then they're in with us. So even if we lose them on one subject line, we have the chance to get them again. This is why we love list building so much, right? So if we don't get the subject line open, they're gone. If we get the subject line, you know, good and they open it up, but they don't click the body copy, they're gone again. But if we do a good job with subject line, provide them with a good one that makes them open, and then we pr provide them with extra good copy inside of the email, then they will click through, right? And when they click through to stage five, they click through to whatever is the thing, right? This is the offer. This is the thing. And the thing may be something to buy or something else to even opt in for. So for example, you could send them an affiliate product like, you know, day one of my follow-up autoresponders. Here's a link to a great product I think you should have. This is an offer. Do they buy it? Yes or no. If they don't, and most people won't, we lose them. But if they do, we get paid, right? Which is what we want. And it can also be sometimes the offer is for another free opt-in to something else, maybe a different sub-list of yours. And you might say, well, why would I want to do that? Well, maybe you have a generic list of people who are interested in internet marketing in general. But you found some really cool social media products, like a guidebook on how to do Facebook and then a product on how to do Twitter, right? Uh, so these, you think, maybe I can sell some of these affiliate products, the guide to Facebook, the guide to Twitter. So maybe I should find on my list of people who are interested in just that. So you may actually send them to another squeeze page inside of your list, maybe not the very same day, of course, but later on, so that they can opt into that list. And then the process starts over again. But now they're specifically on a list, a sub-list, as we call it, to get niche offers just about that one thing. But most of the time, you're going to be sending people to actually an affiliate page or if you have your own products and your own product page. So the question we started off with is, how do we get better subject lines and better you know, open rates on our subject lines and better click-throughs on our body copy? Well, I'll give you a couple more tips for that, but it was very important <coughs> excuse me, for you to see the whole process because if you don't see how the whole machine works here and the various levels where you can lose somebody, then you don't really see the, the reasons why subject lines and body copy are so vitally important. So now let's talk subject lines for a second. First, I want you to keep in mind that uh, you want to focus on benefits. So whenever possible, use you in there, or if it's not you directly, it's you understood, right? Uh, sometimes you can also use controversy or shock, like I can't believe this just happened, or something like that. Uh, you might also want to try short and sweet. Short and sweet is something like, hey, right? Or, got a sec? These work very well sometimes. You want to change them up a little bit, you know, over time. Don't always use the same kind. Another tip is to personalize, right? Um, so you would sign, send one that says, Bob did you see this? So that's another great way to do it by using somebody's name because we like to see our names. Uh, I actually just used two other ones in that last one. Want to utilize questions whenever possible. Questions like that require an answer. Not just um, do you like french fries? Because if it's no, then they're not even going to open it, right? But uh, some kind of open-ended question. And that ties in with the use of the word this. I really, this is one of my secrets because I've never really seen anybody teach the word this, but I love teaching this word because this has so much power. Uh, it's kind of like the word secret in a headline. You can use the word secret in a headline a lot. But I just love the use of the word this in an email subject line. Uh, can you believe this? Have you seen this? This is what I'm talking about, or this is what you need right? Um, 
this drives me crazy. This is something you've never seen before, right? If you want to get XYZ benefit, if you want to lose weight fast, you definitely need to check out this. Or are you making this mistake? You see, I can go on and on and on. Why is this so important? Because, which by the way is a great subject line, why is this so important? You could even use that, I just made it up. But you can see how powerful it is, right? This is so important because it implies that there's something inside of the email that you haven't seen yet. So, you know, instead of saying, if you want to drive traffic, articles work like crazy. Well, that's an already fulfilled statement. So I read it in my subject line. If you want to drive traffic, comma, articles work like crazy, period. Okay, I don't even really need to open up the email then. Thanks a lot because you gave me the whole story and I'll just go write some articles and I won't even click through, you know, open it up to see your body copy that promotes some new article generator software, right? But if you use the same subject line and say, if you want to drive traffic, comma, this works like crazy. Now you got me on the hook. What's this? I have to open it up to find out what the this is, right? So it's a really, really powerful word, and I highly recommend you use it. So these are some tips and tricks to get your emails open. <clears throat> what about some body copy um, tips? Well, first of all, I love short, right? A, a real secret tip that I only teach my VIPs usually is you can even recycle your subject line. So for example, if you wanted to send out a promo for a new article generator wizard software, right? Your subject line could be, as we said before, if you want to drive traffic, comma, this works like crazy. Well, in the body, you can say the very same thing. Hi, comma, if you want to drive traffic, comma, this works like crazy, colon, meaning like crazy, colon, and then the link below, right? So you can use the very same subject line as your body copy. This is a killer tip for using viral list builders or safe lists because really nobody reads those long-winded emails. It's not the great American novel, folks. You're just looking for a click here, right? So you want to get them to open it with something and then you want them get, to get them to click through for something. So I always have, again, I want to say benefits. You also want to use the element of surprise, right? Or mystery. I almost died when I saw this colon link, right? Well, okay, I gotta see that, right? So another couple things to keep in mind is that you can go long if you want to, but you wanna keep them interested. So you might wanna use story, uh, you might wanna use hooks, like uh, I found something that I couldn't believe worked so well for articles, but before I tell you what it is, dot, 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 let me tell you something else. And then, so you can keep them engaged for a while because they're hanging on the hook of the first thing that you said. So there's a lot of different tips you can use and it really bleeds over into a full on copywriting workshop. But basically, I would tell you to be short, have a benefit, use some mystery or surprise. If you're gonna go long, use a hook. And overall, just remember that you're writing for the click. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, but don't write for reading, like I wanna write a letter because I know you're gonna read it. Don't write to write really, really great and be proud of yourself and have your English teacher give you an A. Not saying that you should write bad grammar or bad spelling, but when I say write for the click, that means that the only reason you're writing in the first place is to get somebody to click. And if you keep that in mind, I promise you that you will write differently than you would have written if you were just writing for the sake of hearing the sound of your own voice. Does that make sense? So write for the click, get that click. The subject line is supposed to get the email opened and the body copy is supposed to get that click happening. Whatever you do, don't make the mistake of selling in the email. Please, please, please don't sell in the email. Why? Because you're already A, trying to get them to make a decision on whether or not they wanna buy something, which is a mistake because if they're not sure they want to buy it, you don't even give them a chance to see the, the sales letter where they could buy something. And number two, you're really not as good as the sales letter is going to be anyway. Do you think in an email you can make the sale? If you could, what would they need the sales letter for? Why don't you just send them a link to go you know, directly to the buy button? So people make the mistake of trying to hard sell in the email. What you want to do is get the click, and you can use a lot of different tactics and techniques to get that click. Be ethical, of course, but you can use a lot of different tactics and techniques to get the click, 
without actually selling. So sometimes less is more in this case. So use some of those tips and let me know how they work out for you. So hopefully by looking at this uh, squeeze page diagram, by looking at your three column attraction capture monetization formula, you've gotten some sense of how list building works. And I want to remind you that this isn't just theory. This is you know happening all the time. We've got people on my list every day that are getting subscribers and sales. In fact, if you go to marketerlink.com, you can just see constantly people just you know posting their subscribers or sales in real time. You know, we talk about these things every day. So this works and you want to be a member of a community that does that. So you can find out more about me at sterlingvalentine.com. You can join marketerlink.com. Uh, just get in touch if you need anything. I hope that this uh, list building masterclass was helpful to you. But the most important thing above all that I want you to do when you think about list building is to just build your list. Get a squeeze page as fast as possible. Get it out there. Drive some traffic to it. I don't care if you do it terribly. Do it because to me the single greatest uh, thing that separates the people who want to do internet marketing and the people who are doing internet marketing is that the people who are successful at it are building lists. So I don't care how you do it, just do it. Do not let a day go by without doing some more list building. I'm starting Valentine. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll speak with you soon.